aerial kicks, aerial skills. That yeah, just up? you know, if you look at a number of just they they won the aerial battle, uh, yeah, which is yeah. something that we generally pride ourselves on. It's a game plan that won us the last World Cup. From the outset, this is the third minute. I mean, and this, I only picked out eight of these kicks. Um, they retained possession, um, and the the story just carries on as you go through the game. It just becomes error compounds error. And this is all within the first half. I didn't take any out the second mm. half. This is all first half to aerial battles that they comfortably won and got advantage from and could therefore play from then onwards. Absolutely. And, and, and the other thing, you know, that I also picked up, when we, when we kicked to them, you know, they never kicked long. So they would launch in the middle with another pot and then kick, kick contestable to get uh, one of our, our 15 or our winger in isolated. You know, then they would apply pressure. You know, and they never kicked long against us because they knew we would then get, get back into our shape, you know, getting us into a shape where we can actually attack. But good kudos to them. They, were, they outsmarted us, at, I think, with the kicking game. And also they won the aerial battle, meaning uh, you know, competing in the air. All right. And then the scrums, Kemper. How, how was that set piece? Because I, I felt it was quite a fair contest. We didn't get the parity. It was a good contest. I think yeah. Having Retallick back for them is big. Um, you know, if Whitelock comes back as well, they've got a big selection conundrum. Mm. Is where does Barrett go? Um, but, Chad, yeah, you see that the penalty that goes against France, that knee is clearly on the ground before the scrum collapses. He then folds in and he penalises France, mm. Mahoba, who looks at him with perplexion, and rightly so for a change. <laughs> yeah. Normally, tight head props do that, yeah. but he had a proper look at him saying, my mate, really, you've just stolen my brandy, what's this about? Um, so I didn't think we got the rub of the green uh, penalty-wise regards, particularly that scrum, and I think the one on Kitsoff, there was no replay, so you mm. can't really see what happened there either. Yeah, there was also the penalty advantage we never get going. Uh, is it time to panic, Jono? Where to? How, how, do you, how do you see it? No, I don't, I don't think it's, it's, it's time to panic. I definitely think we just maybe need to have a little bit uh, of uh, intense look at, at, at our referees coming up, um, just to see how their interpretation of the breakdown, uh, the scrums, is going to be. Because I think the, the, the one area where I felt, you know, again, where Robbie mentioned actually, is that we couldn't really get dominance uh, at, at, you know, in the scrums, where that's normally a source of energy for us, a source of our True. tries. When we get advantage, we have a go. Um, and out of the five scrums we had, we only got one. Mm. One proper advantage where we actually had them, and then we, then we actually could actually have, have, a, have a second bite at the cherry. So it, it's, I wouldn't panic yet. I wouldn't panic yet because we still have Trevor. We still have Ox coming back. Um, you know, we, we do have depth in that position. So uh, it's not a it's not red, red, red flag for me yet. Again, go back to that fourth pack. Jason Ryan's taken over it. He's been with the Crusaders for a number of years. He would have coached against mm -hmm. Swiss. Incredible forwards coach. Um, Very good. Particular detail around stopping mm -hmm. driving malls and scrums, two of the areas that we fancy ourselves at. It's kind of where we gain momentum Absolutely. and traction and build pressure yeah. on teams. Those are the two areas which were negated from the start in this match.